So political parties in Parliament say they will apply for a motion of no confidence against the President. They have been holding meetings for several weeks on how to best hold Ramaphosa accountable for the Palapala farm debacle. Ramaphosa has admitted that the proceeds of game was stolen from his farm in February 2020. He's denied being involved in criminal conduct. However, after a case was opened by former State Security Agency Director General Arthur Fraser, who claims that the President tried to keep the robbery secret and in fact abuse state resources to apprehend those who committed the crime. He also says the president was involved in abducting and bribing the alleged robbers. Briefing the media today, the EFF leader Malema said that all the parties except the DA had agreed to bring a motion of no confidence forward. Let's speak to the DA now. We're joined by spokesperson Siviwe Khwarube. Thank you for being with us, Ms. Khwarube. Uh, just explain why the DA is is uh, also calling for accountability, but not standing uh, jointly with other opposition parties on this motion. Good afternoon, uh, Francis, and uh, good afternoon to your viewers. It's really quite simple. I think, firstly, we're all in agreement that a united opposition is incredibly important for accountability in Parliament. And so that's why we've been part of this that have been happening uh, with the opposition parties. However, our view is as follows, that there are two separate processes that are ongoing in Parliament at the moment. Number one, we've got the ATM Section 89 inquiry uh, process, which have, will start as political parties are submitting their names for the independent panel. Now, that is the beginning of an impeachment process. Our view is that once you've begun a process of an impeachment, then you shouldn't undermine that process of impeachment by then uh, applying for a Section 102, um, uh, a process of a motion of no confidence. Section 89 of the Constitution makes it quite clear that should that impeachment inquiry find the president to have broken the law, then he ought to be impeached. Our view is that you, 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 you let that process follow through and then at that point, it well, it can either succeed and you can have an impeachment or then you, if it does not succeed, you explore other means. In addition to this, Francis, as you would know, we'd, we'd, we'd requested an ad hoc committee from the speaker. Now, an ad hoc committee, the reason why that's important is because we would have a committee that is open to the public, that is transparent, like we are seeing with the proceedings of the public protector, where we can question the president question state institutions that were allegedly involved in all of these. These things are quite important in our view before we can move to say, here is a motion of no confidence against the president. We've got to ascertain first the facts, which is why we want a motion, we, we want an ad hoc committee. And secondly, the ATM has moved an impeachment process, which we believe should be allowed to take yeah. its course. Okay, so these processes are all going to happen um, parallel, as it turns out. What does the DA prefer as an end game, a motion of no confidence or impeachment, and, and why? Um, educate us about these parliamentary processes. Look, our view is that an ad hoc committee is quite important. The reason why an ad hoc committee is quite important, I'll take you back a couple of years when Parliament had an Ganja ad hoc committee. What that ad hoc committee was able to do is they were able to subpoena witnesses, they were able to conduct investigations, they were even able to conduct oversight visits at, at Nganja, in fact, uh, if you remember. Now, our view is that if we get an ad hoc committee granted, that ad hoc committee is a multi-party uh, ad hoc committee that will be able to subpoena witnesses and get to the bottom of what has happened. Our problem here is that uh, firstly, the speaker has taken aspects of the complaint to the state uh, security in the, the, the intelligence um, committee in where that the work of that committee is behind closed doors. The second part is that uh, we will not be able to get to the bottom of this and unless we're able to interrogate the facts and have parliament interrogate these facts in an open and transparent manner. Mm -hmm. That is the difference with our approach around the ad hoc committee to then say the outcomes of that can be used either in the impeachment process that the ATM has going or in, as the basis for a motion of no confidence.
Okay, so, so you want to wait for the outcome. Uh, let's just look at the ad hoc committee you are talking about. It's looking into whether the Deputy State Security Minister Zizi Cordwell was involved in some sort of cover-up, whether a secret uh, crime intelligence fund was used. So reportedly, your party has expressed disappointment because this will all be under wraps. It's secret information. So you're saying you're still holding out uh, for Parliament to grant your request for a open, an open ad hoc committee committee, an additional one. Yeah. So so what the speaker has done, those two um, uh, issues that you've, you've stated, uh, as it pertains to state security and the state security fund, she's referred it to the intelligence committee. The intelligence committee does its work behind closed doors. What we are saying is that there are a number of state institutions which are involved in this alleged cover-up. There's so the South African Police Service, the Presidential Protection Unit. There's allegations of kidnapping and torturing. There's allegations that, um, you know, there was a foreign currency. All of these things are, um, are multi-pronged. And essentially, you should be able to subpoena SARS. You should be able to subpoena um, the SAPs. And you can have all of these things under one umbrella, which is our argument that an ad hoc committee is effective, but will also be able to take uh, the, the people of South Africa into our confidence because ultimately the work that we do here is not for ourselves. The work that happens in Parliament should also be the work that the people of South Africa can follow. A lot of people have the question, what happened at the president's farm? What is the story about this money? And so if we're able to have that open and uh, crack essentially open what is essentially an, a possible cover-up, we were able to take South Africans along with us, which is what we want. We don't just simply want to move a motion of no confidence that will either be voted for or against. We need to get to the bottom of what has happened. And we also need to make sure that the people, whoever they may be, are held accountable. And we in the media also have many questions that remain un unanswered. So I understand that frustration. But presumably there are so many investigations going on now. We have um, SARS looking into the matter. The Reserve Bank, was this currency declared? Uh, the police, the, the public protector. And I know previously on um, state capture, you know, Parliament uh, was found to have fallen short by not acting. But is Parliament, I mean, with all these these different processes going on, uh, perhaps not acting uh, too soon this time, preemptively, because presumably with all these official investigations going on, we will get some sort of information at some stage. I think not, Francis. I think, in fact, what Parliament, it, it is good that law enforcement agencies and other agencies like SARS and the Reserve Bank are looking into this matter. But the function of Parliament is to hold government to account government from all the way from the head of the executive to his ministers and his cabinet. In fact, it is the very job of parliament to be asking these questions and summoning some of these entities to come and account. Entities and law enforcement agencies can and should be able to do their work and their investigations, but it is our job to hold government to account. And ultimately here, what we have is an allegation that the first citizen in South Africa could have possibly covered up a crime that could have possibly happened in his home. And that is a big issue. And ultimately, if you remember during state capture, presiding officers and the former Speaker of the National Assembly, Tandem Odisa, had to apologize to the people of South Africa, saying that had Parliament acted sooner, in fact, parts of state capture would not have taken place. We cannot make the same mistake again. And that is why we align ourselves with the opposition parties when we say we want to hold the, to the, the president to account. It's just a matter of how do we get to the facts? Because our view is that this is not just one person that's responsible. There's a multi-layer of people here who could be implicated. All right, thank you very much, uh, spokesperson for the DA, Seviwe Khwarube. We were hoping to uh, speak to the EFF. Unfortunately, they told us sh a short while ago they would not be able to make their interview tonight. We will be speaking uh, to the ANC about some of the claims uh, made by EFF leader Julius Malema today a little bit later on in the show.